And as you know, this God is busy shifting and aligning things because we've moved into a total new um, era in the spiritual realm, the kingdom age, where God wants to release power and kingdom authority in, in, into the spheres of society and into churches like never before. And that's why God needs you to come into alignment and shift and break allegiances and, and be holy and pure vessels. So God wants to release His kingdom power and authority through you to do miracles, signs and wonders. And it's a season of demonstration in this season that God wants to use you in the sphere of influence where he's placed you but but it's a season of demonstration again and if our lives are not sorted out and we have allegiances with idols and other stuff and things that are important to us that our hearts are connected with instead of God and there's compromise then God can't use us in the way he wants to use us and that's why God wants to he wants it more than you do to release kingdom rule and power through us in this season through miracle signs and wonders it will be like in the like in the biblical times with Moses there will be a demonstration power in the marketplace again because God is busy gonna busy moving and there's gonna be a marketplace revival because God needs and depends on you to go out in the highways and the byways there will be people that don't even come to church but you need to encounter them and the power of heaven needs to flow through your hands to perform miracle signs and wonders in this season that's coming. That's why God is on the move, busy shifting and changing things. And it's a season where God wants to restore inheritance back to you, spiritual inheritance, mantles, stuff in your generational line. Think about it. What has been stolen? You should have been further. You should have had more stuff, but it's been robbed. And God wants to restore that. This is on God's menu. This is what God wants for you. And that's why he's saying, guys, come and receive this word and, and, and shift and shift to a new level because I want to use you powerfully in this season. And many of you have gone through heavy battles, you know, and the prophets have been saying it's a birthing of new things, new, but the promises of God over your life, long outstanding pro, um, prophecies that has not come to pass. God is ready to birth it now in this season. This is a season of birthing of that. There's a season where long outstanding impossibilities becoming possible in Jesus mighty name and the battles you've gone through I don't know of you but but we've been through a hectic season it's been in the process of time I mean we felt so weird out and it's been difficult but God is saying that the battles and the, and the trials that you have fought even in this last season has produced the maturity in you has produced the oil in you and has produced a maturity and refined your faith and has produced the oil in your flask in your in your alabaster jar that you need to have that anointing for the greater season and the greater assignments that is now happening and that God wants to release now for now is the time for the greater assignments and greater seasons of your life and doesn't matter how old you are God can use you in your sphere of influence don't think oh I'm retired I'm this and that no no Catherine Kuhlman packed a bag at eight bags at 85 again to go on a new assignments we should not have a worldly mindset about that and I want to say to you nothing will go to waste the battles and the trials that you have gone through has, has released capacity in you to be able to contain the new that God wants to release in this season the purpose of battles and trials if you navigate successfully is to create capacity in you to be able to contain the new and the more of God otherwise you lose it is it true? So when the pressure from the outside is still overwhelming you, it means your capacity on the inside is too small. And God uses trials and battles to stretch your capacity like a little rubber elastic band. And sometimes some of you have felt, oh my goodness, Lord, I can't be stretched anymore. It's going to snap. Who felt like that? One person. Okay. 20. Okay, so, so the Lord is saying that it's not, He's going to use that and He's not going to go to waste. And many of the battles that God has and uh, the biblical pattern of that was to, to work things in you and prepare you for your calling. And, you know, it's just for a season sometimes. But I want to talk to you today about specific battles that you are fighting constantly that God never intended for you to fight. We bite fatal, we, we, bite fatal. we fight battles um, because of our own mistakes sometimes, leaning on the arm of flesh, own decisions. You know, we cry out and repent 200 times and say, Lord, please give me another chance. And God can redeem. And we've brought us here to align you with your callings again and with your assignments that you have. And um, that's not a problem because God redeems. He can buy back your mistakes, anything. That's not a problem. He's the God of second opportunities and more and more and third and fourth opportunities. But I want to speak to you about certain battles that God has, that you are constantly fighting, that God never assigned or never wanted you to fight or never intended for you to fight. And these type of battles we call inherited battles. And these type of battles are the ones you've inherited from your forefathers as a result of their actions. 
and you say to yourself, I'm born again, um, I serve God faithfully, and, uh, but yet there's these negative recurring patterns in my life, uh, negative cycles in my life that keep on you know, repeating itself. And I've been fasting and I've been praying, but I couldn't get to break it. Who feels like that? Okay. Lord, but I'm born again. I'm serving you. What's the problem? What's going on? There's unexplained hardships. There's unexplained um, afflictions coming your way. There's constant um, recurring illnesses coming through. And God is saying, this is the problem. These type of battles are battles that I never wanted you. These patterns in your family, many of them, it's I never intended for you to battle that. I never wanted you to go through it. And you feel, oh my goodness, Lord, as I grow spiritually, I feel blocked. I feel the, the pressure is even mounting up more as I grow in the Lord. And you say, Lord, what is the problem? I feel stuck. I, I feel I'm moving forward three steps and then five back. And forward, you know, who, feels, who felt like that in this season? And you're holding on for dear life. You feel blocked. There's slow movement. There's or no movement. And it's a problem. And many times what the enemy then does, because a lot of us come from maybe religious background, and there's, and there's seeds in our blood that, that, of, of religion and tradition, there's been a mindset and even like a religious thinking mindset that then kicks in. It's like programming. You know, when they program people, suddenly this, you know, this programming is already in your frame, in your mind, and you kick in, you feel, but, um, you know, maybe it's just my portion in life. Maybe that's God's will for me. Have you heard people say that? Oh, maybe it's just the path that God, that's my yard. Yeah, maybe just the path that God has chosen for me. Let me pick up my cross and walk it. But God says, no, I never intended for you to have this. Maybe it's just the path that God has chosen for me. And you start decorating the pit. Remember Joseph? Decorating the pit. Oh, maybe this is just my lot in life. I'm just going to get stuck here. And you start um, creating your life around this dysfunctionality that God never wanted for you to find. And you, as people super spiritualize things and say, well, this is just, you know, this is just my life, you know, and I'm going to carry up my cross and take up my cross like a good soldier and I'm going to bear it for the kingdom. And you feel absolutely amazing. And a lot of people die and they have not reached their full maturity and their full um, calling and their full assignments for their life. And that's not what Christ have come for. Christ have come that we can have abundance we can have freedom and to a new level and we are part of a kingdom that is an advancing kingdom i know there's some seasons sometimes where god um, sends you through a desert time but i mean every season must have an end okay but if these type of seasons that i'm talking to you about that is inherited battles continuous it's continuous cycles you pray and you fast but you don't can't seem to break these cycles and this is what god is saying and i've come to reveal the mysteries of god today regarding this because god wants you to step into the fullness in this season of what he has for you he wants to restore your inheritance and generational inheritance back to you so you can have an effect in the marketplace you can have effect in your sphere of influence that you can have a voice in the in the kingdom when you are powerful when you're anointed in the marketplace, you are powerful when you have money. Money gives you a voice, unfortunately. People don't want to listen to your stories if you, if you are battling financially. That, that's how it is. And our kingdom is an advancing kingdom, a kingdom that doesn't go backwards. So we need to advance. And if we have not been advancing, then, you know, then say, Lord, what is the problem? I need to advance. This is your nature, to move forward. And assumption is the lowest level of knowledge. Oh, Lord, I assume this is my portion of life. I assume this is just, you know, my, uh, how, how my health is going to be or my wealth and, and uh, my family life is just going to be like that. You know, this is how I assume this is my portion in life. Even cultural groups have a, have a limited thinking over them to say, well, you know, we'll never break out of this limitations of poverty and, and, and those type of things. You know what I'm talking about? And the Lord says, I want you to question this. Don't accept it as your fate and that this is how life is. God says, no, question me. For the God says in Hosea 4 that my people perish because of a lack of? Why doesn't God say my people perish because of a lack of prayer? Or lack of fasting? Or a lack of intercession and praise and worship? God says my people perish because of a lack of? Knowledge. And this is crucial because our life is spiritual in nature. And God says... Look through life with spiritual lenses, not with your physical eyes. Because things happen first in the spirit, then it manifests in the natural. This, so this is the important key for us. So if the blessings of God is absent in your life in all areas or it's not manifesting in a specific area, there's a problem. Do you agree with me? Okay. Ask questions. Some people say, well, I embrace it. You know, I just accept it as unchangeable. No. I've come here today to tell you no. Ask questions. Say, Lord, I need to know. And God is saying you need to ask me for divine insight, divine revelation, and divine knowledge. 
to be able to get to the root of the issue so that of the problem so I can defeat the enemy because you know if you touch the root the fruit will disappear is it true so we, we need to do that so with inherited battles the problem is that prayer and fasting does not get rid of it the prayer and fasting and pushing into God and say, Lord, what is the problem? That will give you, the prayer and fasting will give you a divine inside revelation and knowledge regarding the problem. And I was sharing with them yesterday, I was, I was at the same place because we are in ministry and marketplace. So I'm talking from, from a place of understanding um, how you feel because I've, I've been through similar stuff. And I've come to a point where my life was squeaky clean and we've done everything we know to do. And there was no sin in my life and there was everything I've cut out. But I said to the Lord, what is the problem now? Because I'm still not getting breakthrough. I'm still having these patterns and, and cycles in my life that's reoccurring and I'm not moving forward. And the Lord gave me a dream as I start crying out to you that was divine revelation. And as I prayed through the dream and as I exercised it, there was a shift in the change. But if I just left and said, Lord, this is just my portion of life. I'm just sure, you know, it's my cross. You know, this is just how it's going to be. Then I would have still been in that situation. And the Lord was saying, cry out and ask me for the wisdom and the revelation. And some people say, but I have prayed through certain things. Some people say, but I have gone through, um, you know, this one prayed with me and I broke this and that. But many times you um, have prayed through things on a peripheral level and not you haven't touched the root of it. And when you're done that, you have temporary release, but then suddenly the root reestablishes and suddenly you're back in that same cycle. Does it sound familiar? And God says, cry out to me for divine revelation. Part of our ministry is that, um, you know, God can give you a dream. God can speak to you through the word. He can, he, can, he can speak to you in many ways or he will speak to you through a prophet. So part of God is prophetic is the Lord will show what is keep, keep, keeping people in chains and people in bondage. So God can use any type of revelation to do that. And there come a time when God wants you to break free. But people say, you know, but Anton, I'm not understanding this because I'm a new creation. I'm born again. All things have passed away and all things have been made new. Christ has become a curse for me. Yes, it's right. This is, this is what the scripture says. But your life, our lives do not display it. Our life does not display the fullness. And um, I want you to look at a key that the Lord has given us in the scripture in Hebrews 7 verse 9 and 10, which is a crucial key to answering this problem. We'll see Hebrews 7 9 says a person, okay, before you read that, um, this is, in, in Hebrews 7, it tells a story when Abram paid tithes to Melchizedek. Who remembers that? Yeah. All right, that is, um, that's Genesis 14, 18. He paid tithes to Melchizedek. So what happened when that happened? Paying tithes to somebody is a righteous spiritual transaction. Yeah. Sorry, just take it off for a while. I just want to lay this one. That this is a righteous spiritual transaction. Everything we do, whatever you say, whatever you do with money, constitute spiritual transactions it's a natural thing but it does something in the spirit life and death is in the power of the tongue what we say over our life it concludes spiritual transaction those who, of you who are in business you know what a contract is you know what a transaction is so what do you do with your mouth people conduct spiritual transactions all the time with their mouths through money through actions that they are and if it's contrary to the word of god it's an it's it's a it's a um, ungodly spiritual transaction and the enemy um, gets an open door in your life because of that so generationally there's quite a lot of those things so what happens is let's read the scripture sorry just put it up again okay let's go so when abram gave tithes to melchizedek the bible says a person might even say that levi who was in abram's lineage the father of the priestly tribe himself received tithes paid through Abram. Next scripture. For he was still in the loins of his forefather Abram when Melchizedek met Abram. So this is a New Testament scripture that says that Levi, which was in Abram's lineage, although unborn at the time of that spiritual transaction, when he gave the tithes to Melchizedek, Levi was part and parcel in real time, part of that transaction, in person, because he was in Abram's loins. This is a New Testament scripture that says, when they made the deal, because, because uh, he was, he, um, Levi was in his loins, he was in real time, part and parcel of that transaction, as if he was there in person at that time. Can you imagine, by default... You know, the opposite is also true. So think about the, the, the demonic transactions of, of, or unrighteous transactions that's been conducted by your forefathers. You were also there present in time. 
And this is part of the dreams that I had. This is, this is what God said. This is heavenly protocol. I mean, I was amazed when I saw the scripture. I said, Lord, this is it. We don't understand the protocol of heaven. We don't understand the things of the Lord, the mysteries. And we don't understand why can't I get free? And God said, there's spiritual transactions testifying against you that you need to get rid of. So I want to break you free. But Lord, it's not fair. I wasn't even there when it happened. How can this be? This is impossible. I wasn't even born when it happened. That's what people say. This is ridiculous. How can I be held accountable for what they have done? I don't even know what they've done. <laughs> and this is unfortunately how kingdom protocol and in in, in the system works. Because God sees a family in a generation, not in a family unit. God sees a family in a generation and not in a family unit. I don't know of you, but we, when we go to the doctor in South Africa, we have to fill out a form many times. And they fill out on the form, they said, you know, your name and everything. And then they ask you, do you have any hereditary diseases? Is there anything passing that's coming through the bloodline of diabetes, you know, um, heart problems? And sin works exactly the same. What is true for the natural is true for the spiritual. But people say, I don't understand it. I don't want to understand it. I'm angry at God. I don't know what's the problem. Why am I not getting breakthrough? And this is a key the Lord is giving you today, that there was spiritual transaction that God saw when your father, grandfather, whoever on your mother, your father's side conducted some wrong spiritual transactions through money. There could be blood spilling. There could be um, idol worship in, in a, some shape or form, any, or any sin. That connects a spiritual transaction, and God accounts you as if you were there yourself. According to that. So God wants you to give you a breakthrough. So God says, doesn't matter if you believe it or not, it works. You know? And that's why Hosea says, my people perish or are destroyed because of a lack of? Knowledge. Because of a lack of? Knowledge. This, is knowledge. this is knowledge that he's giving us today. Not because of lack of prayer, knowledge. And we don't have knowledge because we are, we are stuck in certain situations. We don't have knowledge about this transaction. That's the problem. And people fight the same battles all their life. You have family members that were fighting the same addictions all their life. The same financial patterns all their life. Everything. Addiction. Sexual sin. They battle it their whole life until they die. They never got a victory over it. Because of the power of that spiritual transaction. And it's easy to break it, but there's a way and there's a protocol to break it. Okay, so I'll talk about that now. So the Bible says, Lamentations 5, 7, just quickly says, Our fathers have sinned and are no more, but we bear their iniquities. Iniquity is the word for generational or foundational sin, bloodline sin that's in the Bible. You know the word because he, I'll, I'll come to that now. Luke 11, another New Testament scripture says, uh, Luke eleven forty seven to 50 as three scriptures, the summary of those scriptures says, there's a curse upon the righteous because their forefathers killed the prophets. We are righteous. The Bible says, New Testament, there's a curse upon the righteous because their forefathers killed the prophets. So the root causes of our inherited battles that we are battling with, of our financial battles, of our health battles, our relationship battles, sexual battles, all those root problems are these um, demonic or wrong covenants, oaths and agreements that has been cut that is testifying against us. That's the bottom line of it. Yes, so you need to ask the Lord, prayer and fasting mostly won't work to break it you need to get to the root of it and you need to ask them pray and fast to ask the lord give me the answer give me the root give me the wisdom and the revelation what am i battling with i did and god gave me two dreams which unlocked god sent the prophet sometimes god will do it if you cry out to him not giving up and pushing forward and say lord i'm not giving up i'm not letting you go until you show me what is the problem I cannot live in the cycles. I cannot live in this, but this is not my life. There's something greater inside of me. There's a greatness inside of me that I know needs to come out. I feel there's something inside of me that still needs to, uh, there's something huge and great which needs to be released into the place where you've given me, and I, I'm not happy where I am. Is it true? I felt like that. I said, Lord, this can't be it. There must be more. And I said, I don't care what it is. I just hold on to God because I know God is faithful. He's a covenant-keeping God. I knew His nature. I knew who He was. And I, I, I steered away from accusing Him and, and, and you know, asking questions because we don't have perfect knowledge about everything. 
So this is another reality you might not have known, and today the Lord is revealing it. So those covenants and agreements are cut through words, uh, blood that was spilled unjustly, sin, idolatry. And this type of stuff will not keep you out of heaven, but it will make your life hell on earth. Inherited battles in iniquity will not keep you out of heaven. It will make your life hell on earth. Yeah, exactly. And we see in 1 Peter 5 was 8, that scripture, everybody knows it. The Bible says, your adversary, the devil, is walking around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The word adversary in the Greek or Hebrew, I don't know which one it is, says uh, that word adversary means one who has a legal case against you. Satan can't do anything about you unless he's got a legal case. You know what a legal case when they take you to court? There must be a basis for it. Otherwise the court will throw it out, right? He can do nothing unless he has got a legal case against you. That's what that word means. So bring the files. What is the legal case? I don't have time now, but the Lord showed us visions about this pack of files um, that demonic sheriffs almost like comes and, you know, with all the accusations against you generationally and seeking whom he may devour. He's not devouring, devouring everyone. There's certain people. Whom? 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 So thank you, Jesus, that Jesus paid the price so that we can be free. Hmm? He paid the price for everything. And Isaiah 53 says that he paid the price also for our iniquity, which is referring to bloodline sins or this generational inherited battles. What is, he was bruised for our iniquities. What does that mean? The blood is not on the outside, it's on the inside. You know a bruise? No blood on the outside, it's on the inside, which signifies generational stuff or stuff that is, you know, inside the, you know, inside the roots. Hmm? Yeah, under the surface, on the inside generational stuff. Jesus paid the price for that. What Jesus have done is paid the bank blanket price for everything, everything, but we have to apply what he has done for us. It's not automatic. If it was an automatic thing, we all had a, would have had abundant life by now. So the Lord is saying, I've paid the blanket price for everything. And I normally explain it to people who can't understand it to say, well, it's like the Lord has given you a holiday voucher. Okay, unless the vouchers in your and, and if the vouchers in your in your drawer, you can't use it. You can't use the benefits of it. You have to go and appropriate it at the resort to get the benefits of the voucher. This is this is what it says. And some people say, but no, Jesus done it all. Leave me alone. I'm going on like that. I don't want to listen to your stories. No, Jesus has paid the price, but you need to go and apply what he has done to you in your situations. So just quickly, how do we get rid of this um, uh, transactions, this unrighteous or demonic um, spiritual transaction that's been conducted in your life and by your parents and, and great, great parents and up? I mean, there could be stuff going up for 500 years. And the Lord will show you. The Lord is faithful. As you cry out, he will show it to you. Okay, he will not hold back because he wants you more. He wants you free more than you want to be free. And especially in this season where God wants to use, you know, the kingdom age and God wants to come and use kingdom and, and, and display his kingdom power on the planet. The enemy had its time, now it's God's time. And God needs you to be in alignment and God wants to use you. So how does it work? We need to find the root of this problem by divine insight, knowledge, and revelation. Apply the blood of Jesus to the root. Repent. If once you got the revelation, the revelation is a key that gives you the authority to unlock and break. Part of our assignment here is to give you revelation to, to break and unlock and revoke and reverse. Through repentance, normal, you break it, you reverse it. Because God needs, as somebody conducted this transaction, God needs somebody to stand in the gap to reverse it. If you want to get divorced, if somebody divorces, you can tell your wife, bye Felicia, I'm going. I don't want to see you ever again. Okay? But that doesn't work like that. You have to go to court as well. There's a legal process. You can't say, I'm divorced now, leave me alone. It's not true. You're still married. You have to go through the courts and go through a legal process to reverse um, the, the, the marriage, right? Through court papers and a legal transaction. And this is what God wants us to do through this thing, you know, through this, uh, you know, in the same manner. And the fact that you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior does not break the legal transaction that's standing against you. Yeah, but it's not my fault. It doesn't matter. This is how the structure works. This is the club rules. 
This is how it works. Okay? I don't believe it. It doesn't matter. You'll die and not ever reach your full destiny and your purpose. We need to be open. I said to God, if there's anything, I have never arrived. If I come to a place, people need to teach and tell. I can, I can, people that's on the low, it doesn't matter who it is. God will, will cause people, even at the lowest level of the un, unlikeliest people, to give you revelation sometimes. Even your wife. Oh, what do you know? Shush. I'm talking to my business partners and to this one. No. God is, will deliberately give your wife or your husband revelation that will unlock things for you. I've had certain high-level meetings with rich business people, and they all said, oh, goodness, you know, my wife, the Lord gave my wife revelation most of the times, and I never listened. I want to listen to this one. And they repented, all of them. That's why as couples, we have to stand together and operate together, pray together. You don't have to have a degree or, or qualifications. You've got gifts and anointings and callings of your life. And God loves the family unity, loves the unity of husband and wife working together. And I want to say to you, start praying together. It's got so much power, you'll hit the bullseye every time. I come from a religious background, traditional church, where praying was private. You don't pray with your wife, you pray private. And you pray soft. No, this is a spiritual weapon. If you can pray in unity with your wife, you hit the bullseye. Get rid of the, 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 you know, the whatever is around you, the programming and how you feel. And I feel no, this is not a time for this. We need to be, be, be breaking open and breaking through and pushing forward and grabbing what God has for us and being violent and say, Lord, I don't care. I'm throwing off constraint, all constraints off. I'm cutting those ties and things. I'm doing what I need to do now. And, I, you know, and I'm, I'm doing something different. If you keep doing the same thing, there will be no results. Do something you've never done before to get things you never had before. Amen. Be radical. Quickly, I'm, I'm finishing now. So, do you understand that? So, your bloodline or your foundation does not respect your anointing or your calling. I tell you. It's unpredictable in timing of attack. And it's unpredictable in mode of attack. Your foundation or bloodline is ruthless. It's very dangerous. And it doesn't even care if you're a pastor or whatever you are. You wonder why you know, this guy was so powerful, such a powerful anointing and mantle, but now he died before his time. This man of God, this woman of God. You know, have, haven't you thought about those things? Why? This is the answer. Your foundation or your bloodline. Let's look at scriptures quickly. Can we do it quickly? Uh, take your time. Okay, the roaster, is in, the roaster is in the oven. When we at home, people say, my roaster is in the oven, I have to go. Okay. Not today. Quickly, I'm going to be, I'm rushing. 2 Kings 13 verse 14 is about Elisha. This scripture says, now Elisha has fallen sick of his sickness, King James Version, of which he died. What does it mean, his sickness? Can he actually manufacture sickness? People can't manufacture sickness. No. It was a familiar bloodline generational sickness that he died for. But my goodness, he was the most powerful prophet in the world. He was, I mean, he was so anointed when he was, his body was put in the grave and a thief was thrown into the cave, the cave years after. The anointing and the residue of his anointing was so powerful still in his bones that that thief got resurrected. Do you remember that story? So powerful and yet anointed, but the bloodline took him out. Your foundation took you out. No respecter. Comes viciously and attacked you. We, we have a thing like demonic time clocks that the enemy has set in the spirit. We've ministered to people and says, my dad died at 49. My grandfather died at 49. That's a demonic time clock. And at the right time, it takes you out. And the thing is that the strong man operating from your family altar, the demonic one, will keep you like a dog on a leash. You'll progress a little bit in a certain season and at some place when you start worshiping God too much and you start going into new things of God and becoming more powerful, it will pull you back like a dog on a leash. And say, so you're not going any further. I'm blocking you. We've prayed for high-level people in ministry that could not get out of regions and influence because of, of, of those contracts. They were demonic spirits. Say, sorry, I've got a contract. And I'm blocking you. You're not getting out of this region to do business. I'm blocking you in this territory. And there's strong man operating on your mother and your father's side from family altars that is blocking you. And the legal right is this transactions. So I say, Lord, I need to know. Let's look at, I'm going to give you four examples and then I'm done. Is that okay? Another perfect example of inherited battles is the life of Abram. God said to Abram, leave your father's house 
and move to the land I will tell you. And his father was, father's name was Terah. And the Bible says in Joshua 24, Terah was an idol worshiper. Abram's dad was an idol worshiper. Can you imagine all the spiritual transactions that was con conducted through that lifestyle? And what happened? But Abram was a friend of God, highly anointed, rich. Wow. You know, friend of God. Who, who, who wants to be God's friend? Yes, we want to be. Amazing. Well, closely connected. But yet he failed to deal with the generational curses and the foundational issues that came upon his family line because of idol worship of his dad. He never dealt with it and it was passed on to the next generation. But a highly anointed friend of God, powerful. Can you see these things operate separately? And because the enemy is a legalist and God is just, God can't just override and overrule things. You need to cry out and say, God, show me what is the problem. Show me what is, the, give me the divine insight and knowledge about it. Give me, give me knowledge. Because we perish, perish without knowledge. So, let's see. What was the inherited battles passed on from Abram that he failed to deal with? Firstly, there was barrenness. This is a curse because of the idol worship of his dad. Abram battled for 25 years to get kids. Isaac, 20 years. Abram eventually got kids because the Lord made him do a major big sacrifice on his altar that, that broke, you know, sacrifice breaks sometimes things that God gives you divine revelations and divine instructions, it can break a curse at the right moment and the right time. Genesis 15, God said, oh, take one high for one goat, one ram, three years old. It was a whole uh, thing that God wanted him to prepare to break this curse. But anyway, we don't have time to go into that. The second... Mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just feel it's very important. Um, if you look at that scripture with um, Abraham, God said to him, I need you to deal with this curse. So what happened was God said, kill a hypha of three years. What is the in the English? The goat, three years. And a ram of three years. Three plus three plus three is nine. And it broke the cycle of infertility. So it is so important that we understand how spiritual transactions work because God will always tell you, and you'll say, but Lord, it doesn't make sense. There was a very, the story, is, uh, you'll probably know who this is, where someone that was fighting against abortion um, in America, and it's someone that's got quite a, um, a voice um, and he's still he's fighting on a governmental level against abortion. And as we were in a meeting in Dallas, um, I was worshipping, doing my own business. And suddenly, the Lord started revealing things to me. And just after the worship, I went to this person's wife and I said, um, God showed me there's an illegal transaction. And you guys have been battling to get through breakthrough. But the Lord is saying the blood that was on the abortion in this person's life is the very thing that he tried to fight on a, a, um, a governmental level, but that's the very thing that comes to try to take him out. And I said, he will not be able to progress on a governmental level unless you deal with the blood in the natural. Yes, but we did repent. I said, but it's one thing to repent. But there is something that the enemy is using as a spiritual transaction that's blocking you. And as we started praying, God started revealing things and we could reverse the transaction. Then the Lord showed us five generations ago, every time since five generations ago, they've started losing ground and land after land after land, every generation. And the Lord said to me, tell them the land is coming back and the family fight that's been going for five generations. Every generation there's a family fight. The Lord is breaking the family fight and the Lord said within the next two weeks you shall have a shift because there's a property that was in, in, in um, um, a justice system. There was a property and what happened was Within two days, after we reversed the transaction, they got news from a lawyer that the property was released in their name and the whole fight in the family, five generations, was reversed because we dealt with the spiritual transaction. And God wanted to do it. But 
as you cry out to him, as you push through this process, you know, and I've been saying, God, but why haven't you given me the revelation earlier in my own life? You know, why didn't you give me a year ago? Why did you wait another year for the next generation? That God works in you in the process of time because God is in the marinating process. You want the end result. God is more interested in the process. And as you cry out to him, as you push and you, and you hold on to him, you build memorials with God. Because he then has the ability to show you his covenant nature. And when you come into the greatest season where God wants to give you more, then you know. I will not lose it because I know my God. There's memorials behind you where God has come through for you. Who's got testimonies? You think if God has done that for me, surely he can do it for me now. But if you don't have an understanding and a personal experience of God's covenant nature as a dad in every level and dimension, healer, provider, if you don't have that, you will not be able to sustain what God wants to release in the next season, the fullness. You will lose it. And through the process, God has put your heart through the fire and have done major things in your life so that you can be able to sustain what he wants to give to you in the, in the next season. Finances. Higher level of responsibility. Otherwise, it's going to take you out. You have to have that capacity to be able to do it. And what Kari is saying, many people fight for righteousness and justice, but the very thing they're fighting, they're in bed with. And then it takes you out. So if you are fighting abortion and injustice, make sure that you don't have spiritual transactions in your bloodline that it speaks out against you of injustice. And this is what happened. They were, they were in a terrible, uh, it, was, it, was a, you know, it was terrible. Because they were being pushed back all the time. It wasn't a pleasure. Because the same thing they were fighting were fighting them. Until God revealed it. And there was a moment when it was broken. And I decree it over you. Today is your day in Jesus' name. So the second inherited ba battle and second thing, um, uh, you know, generational thing that Abram failed to deal with was the lying. Generational lying. Do you have people in your family that loves to tell white lies? They lie big time. I mean, yeah, big time. I mean, you think it's such a ridiculous little thing, but there could be a generational lying thing. Abram lied about his wife to the Philistine king and said, oh, my wife is my sister. How rude. And then, who did the Isaac, his son, did the same. And then the third generation, Jacob, the same. He lied to his dad about being Esau. See how this generational thing goes, this pattern goes on? It's in your blood. That seed pulls you. You've got to draw to that, to that specific sin because that seed is being passed on in your blood. And the strong man from your family altars, the demonic strong man, actually comes and then reels you in and operate. And it's the enemy behind the scene who manipulate and control you without you even realizing it. And you're serving Jesus. You are born again. Yeah. The third curse in battle was the planting of the firstborn. This curse... Because of the idol worship of the, of, of the dad. The firstborn in the family line always lose their rights. Ishmael, Isaac, Esau, Jacob, Ephraim, and Nasa, I think as well. It went down the line. All the firstborns lost their right. Yeah, up till David, I think almost. But Abram was anointed. He was powerful. He loved God. He was a friend of God. No, these things still operated. Very alive and well. And many of us are like Abram. We're close to God. We, have, we are anointed. We have mantles. We have power and fire in our hands. We have gifts. We are powerful. But yet, we have these cycles in our life that we can't get rid of. And the issues of your foundation, you remember, who isn't building here? If you build a house, it's only as strong as your foundation. And if your bloodline has got a bad foundation, you know, that's why some people collapse. The foundation is bad. And the issues of your foundation will be ruthless and will kill you. It will take you out even before your time. It does not care. Your foundation or your bloodline is like a script written behind the scenes that spiritually direct you. Who's the director of the script? It could be poverty. It could be addiction, sickness, covenant breaking. Covenant breaking is a spirit that can manifest personally and in business. What type of spirit is this? This is when in previous generations, promise has been made and it's been broken. Then a covenant breaking, that's a legal transaction. Covenant breaking spirit is attached. It can also attach to land. And it manifests through divorce and through business deals going sour. Business trans partners just like this. And then suddenly, you know, there's a division or a, or a breaking up in the relationship. 
And that's how covenant breaking generationally spirit can, can, can manifest. Let's look at the last three examples that I'm done. Um, 2 Kings 5.25 is a story about Gehazi and Naaman. Okay? And remember, Elisha healed Naaman of leprosy. Do you remember that story? And what happened is that Naaman says, Oh, wonderful. Praise the Lord. Here's some gifts for you. And the prophet said, No, thank you. I don't want the gifts. And Gehazi thought, Hmm, I need a few gifts. And behind his back, he went to Naaman and said, Give the gifts to me. Hmm. And what was the result? The prophet declared, and decreed and released the curse upon Gehazi and said, because you've done this, there will be leprosy in your bloodline. Can you imagine five generations later, the people in Gehazi's bloodline, they didn't have a cooking clue where the leprosy comes from. What, what, what caused the legal transaction? They're just bearing with that. The same thing we see in Joshua 6.26, where Joshua declared and he pronounced, anyone who dared to rebuild Jericho, well, uh, there will be a curse upon that person who dares to rebuild Jericho. Yeah, he released it. Oh my goodness. Shame the poor guy that attempted to build it. He was not aware that there was a curse operating. And this is another teaching and another thing. That when you move into new properties or houses, there could be a lot of curses, there could be a lot of stuff in the house attached to the land as well. And as you move there and you don't cleanse it, those stuff started to control you and, 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 and manipulate you and, and, and bring problems in your life. Um, Zechariah 5 verse 3 says, A curse goes, goes into the timber and the stones of a house. So imagine you move into a house with a wonderful marriage. Suddenly you moved into a house where there was divorce. That spirit starts attaching to you and suddenly you and your wife fight all the time. Bankruptcy as well. We back home have premises. You know, one business, you know, becomes bankrupt, foreclosure in one premises. The next one moves in there. The same thing happened, etc., etc. Depends on, on, because sin has an effect on the land. Hosea 4 says, 1 to 4 says, what is the effect of the sin that people does on the land? The land gets defiled and it starts vomiting out in, in, in inhabitants. So we see this is another angle, and we have ministered to people who are devastated just because they live on defiled land or defiled houses, if you know what I mean. So what happened was in 1 Kings 16, Heal, the, the, the Bethelite, came and he tried to rebuild Jericho. The curse was that um, the person who rebuilds Jericho, his firstborn son will die at the time of laying the foundation, and the younger son will die when the gates are being set up. And indeed, it happened just like that. He wasn't aware that there was a curse connected to it. Does it change the thing? No. It attached and it happened. Generational deliverance or foundational issues is a process. It is like an onion. Okay? It's different layers. It's not a one, once-off thing. It's different layers. You need perseverance and patience to break through those layers and to, and to start repenting and doing things. It takes really patience. You know, some stuff is, is there for 400 years, five generations. They're not going to let go that easily. They are, they are resilient and they are stubborn. And, um, and what God does, sometimes at a certain level, He opens up stuff for you and you deal with it. And then for a season, things are okay. And suddenly, as you grow spiritually, God opens up more things to you. Because He knows that you have the maturity now to deal with that. But Lord, I've, dealt, I've been here before. Why, why am I suddenly dealing with the same problems now? Because God says you've dealt with level A and B, but C you haven't dealt with. Now I'm opening it up, and I now want to deal with it. Because you have the tools and the maturity now to deal with it. So... To end off, just another quick example. Okay. In 2 Samuel 21, there was a famine in the land for three years. And David said, God, there's a problem. Why is there famine on the land? There's a spiritual problem. Some people look at things in the natural too much. It's a spiritual problem. Why? And he started crying out to God. And God gave him divine insight, knowledge, revelation. And he says, God said to him, there's a famine because Saul killed the Gibeonites. So there's a curse on the land. Oh, he says, oh my goodness. But this was a long time ago. So what happened is Joshua, when they moved into the promised land, cut a covenant with the Gibeonites, who were some of the inhabitants in the promised land, to say that we will not kill you. We'll live with you. We'll not kill you. Don't worry. Of course, our good friend Saul came about 400 years later, and, or a few hundred years later, and he killed the Gibeonites. That immediately, when the covenant was broken, that Joshua made, immediately brought the curse. 
Can you imagine in your family line of people broke cover, break covenants? If you break covenants, we are so loosely going around with our words. Oh, I'll call you tomorrow. Or I'll, you know, yes, we'll go out. Don't say a thing if you're not going to do it. You know, I'm just saying it sounds ridiculous and petty, but let's just watch what we say with our mouths because our, our, we live in a voice-activated kingdom. And we are, we are, you know, God spoke things into existence and we don't realize the legislative power and whatever you have in your life through your mouth. Life and death is indeed in the power of the tongue. And whatever you say, think about that because you are conducting spiritual transactions with your mouth because that's how God cuts deals and does things in the spirit through his mouth. The fact that we use documents is a trust issue. But if you say a thing and, and God's calendar, it's what you say with your mouth. So we need to be careful. Are you the prophet of your own destiny? Some people curse their own destiny. Some people curse the enemy entice you to look at your circumstances and, you, and he wants you to speak in alignment with that. I'll never be this and that. I'll never blah, blah, blah. And then if you cut those spiritual transactions, the enemy says, I've got legal right. They've made a contract with their mouth. You gave it to him. Can you understand how powerful this is? So what happened is um, there was a curse because Saul killed the Gibeonites and God is revealing it only after f a few hundred years and because it had an effect. Now Saul is dead. But still, you know, it had an effect on this generation. Saul was dead a long time ago, but it was affecting this generation. Same is happening to us. Things happened a long time ago, but there's stuff affecting you now because of spiritual transactions of your parents. So David says, oh my goodness, I have to break the famine. He rushed to the Gibeonites. He says, please, what can I do to, for you? Forgive me. What can I do to pay, um, you know, almost to, um, you know, to repent and to, what can I give you so that we can de deal with this matter? And the Gibeonites said, well, all that, well, thank you for the excuse and thank you for the apology. But what you can do for us is to kill seven of Saul's offspring. High price to pay. So it was done. So all Saul's offspring was slaughtered and executed except Mephibosheth, who was the son of Jonathan, because there was a sub-covenant cut between David and Jonathan. They will not kill each other's offspring. God honors covenant. This is super crucial that God honors covenant. If you've cut covenant with God, if you've broken covenant in any way with people, this is serious. And we need to go back and say, Lord, show me. And what happened is as soon as that sacrifice was done, um, the, the Bible says the Lord heard their prayers and dr the drought was broken in Jesus' name. And my last example is going to be in 2 Kings 5.10. It's a story about Naaman and the prophet Elisha. Naaman was a commander of the Syrian army, as you know, a man of courage, highly esteemed. Um, you know, and the Bible says, wow, status, fantastic, but unfortunately, he had leprosy. How many people have said to you, oh, you're great in this and that, but unfortunately... Yeah, no, you're divorced. Unfortunately, you don't have money. Unfortunately, you've got this thing that is wanting to steal your greatness and the anointing upon your life. This thing that you can't get breakthrough from. And people are, the enemy wanted to look, attach his identity to you in this previous season. Instead of God's identity. And we need to sort out these battles and these spiritual transactions so we can step into the fullness of what God has for us in His identity. That people will no longer say, oh, you're wonderful and this and that, but mm, if it wasn't for the leprosy. So what happened is, let's look at this. So Naaman, you know, by a divine connection, which is the little um, Israeli um, maid that was working in his house. Um, that, you know, God works with the divine connections in this season. You know that God will bring divine connections that will propel you into your destiny. New doors are opening for you. And God bring this divine connection. This lady says, this little girl says, go to the prophet. He'll pray for you. Naaman came as the great and mighty. Fantastic. He came and he said, okay, prophet, what must I do? God gives him a prophetic plan. He didn't pull it out of a hat to say, mm, you know, what prophetic action are we going to do today to get rid of your leprosy? God gave him a prophetic plan. And he said to him, God says, you dip yourself seven times in the Jordan River. The strong man from Naaman's, Naaman's bloodline and altar rises up and made him super irritated and says, why can't you just call me out and take your hand and swipe it over me and say, gone leprosy, you know, and be glamorous. And by the way, is there not cleaner rivers around in this place and that place? Why must you use this filthy river? Because the strong man operating from his family altar, the negative one wants to block him to get the healing. 
So that thing rises up in him, but his staff says, Oh, no, Amen, please. Have mercy, you know, please, you know, just calm down, you know, just do it, you know, whatever. Okay, okay, you do it. Okay. And he went and he, did, and he dipped himself in the river. Prophetically, what was God saying? What, why did he have to do that? Naaman suffered of a seven generational curse. And God prophetically said, you dip yourself in the Jordan River, which is a generational river. And if, as you do it and as you dip yourself once, I'm reversing the first generation. Second one, I'm reversing the curse in the second generation. And third and fourth and sixth. And nothing happened to him until he dipped himself for his generation and the leprosy left. And he come, came out of the river, cleansed the skin like a baby. I told the Jordan River is a generational river. So God was highly prophetic with this prophetic instruction. Yeah. And he said, and he, when he came up the seventh time, it was for his generation and the leprosy was gone. But while you were doing what God told you, there's been a shift in the spirit that you can't see. And God is busy doing things in the spirit and reversing until he got healing and he got breakthrough and the curse was broken in Jesus name. So there's many stories. So I want us to stand and I want us to pray. And ask the Lord to come and, and shift these things because you have to come in alignment. God wants to use every one of you in a greater level in this season. To release His power through you to do miracle signs and wonders in this season. To demonstrate kingdom rule in the earth realm. Because we're moving to a place in the spirit and, and even in a natural that we've never seen before. With, uh, you know, the third awakening coming and the Lord is doing amazing exploits. But He needs us. He needs you. You are a certain piece in the puzzle that cannot fulfill the role of somebody else. Say, so, oh Lord, I'm nothing. You know, can you use me? I'm so bad. I've done so many mistakes. No, there's something you must do for God that I can't do. There's some, some little piece in the puzzle in the tapestry that God is weaving that only you can do. Young or old. You hear me? Young or old. You are not over. Things are not over. Things are not finished and clear. It's not. God wants to use all of you in your sphere of influence to perform those things. So let's just pray. Father, we thank you today for this revelation. I thank you, Lord, that the enemy will not come and be able to steal this in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you, Father, for this word that will fall into so fertile ground. I thank you, Father, for the revelation that is coming today, Father, that we can steward that. And we ask, Father, even today, Father, that you'll come and highlight to us things that has been testifying against us. Lord, I'm asking that you speak, Father, to us in this place, Father. Give us divine revelation, knowledge, and insight, Father. Because we don't want to perish because of lack of knowledge. Father, we want to say we want to try again. Father, we want to say we want to rise from our prostration and our depression. And we will rise because your glory will be seen upon us. And your glory will shine from us. Because the world needs to see it. And we ourselves have been downtrodden and flat on the ground. And the Lord is saying we need to get up from that this, the prostration and depression. And rise up because he wants to display his glory through us. And many of you who stood and didn't understand but you have believed. And like Lazarus, God is saying his glory will be revealed through you because you have believed so father i prophesy fourth day resurrections over people father i declare supernatural turnarounds father even as we pray today even as we come today lord that you'll come and speak to your people in dreams come and speak to them for your prophets speak to them for your words father father let people come and tell them father even family members didn't you know about this didn't you know about that and lord and as we repent and as we reverse these transactions they will step into the fullness of our calling and we shut those legal doors we smash and revoke and reverse those legal transactions father so we can move forward father in power and might in the fullness of our inheritance lord in jesus mighty name because this is on your agenda and this is your timeline in jesus mighty name amen and amen